try to imagine a world with little to no cybersecurity. No secure way to confidently store all of today's digital personal data. A world where life itself is so illogical. Well, it's logical. In 1976, Martin Hellman, along with Whitfield Diffie and Ralph Merkel, were dead center in America's first crypto war with the American NSA, a war that changed history of encryption standards, protocol, and the thought process living in a new world of cybersecurity. So join us as we sit down with 2015 Turing Award co-recipient Martin E. Hellman at Stanford University where we share an exciting inside look into the digital battles of cryptography, cybersecurity, nuclear security, and illogical logic. When I started working in cryptography, my colleagues told me uniformly that I was crazy to do so because NSA had this huge budget. How could I hope to discover something they didn't already know? And furthermore, if I did anything good, they would classify it. Both arguments had validity. Both arguments came to uh, uh, haunt me. And yet it was very wise in hindsight to do something that appeared so foolish. It was that exact illogical logic as described in Hellman's CACM article that led to their interest in protecting data in a way that was surely soon to have a world-changing effect that needed to be secure. With the recent implementation of the Data Encryption Standard, or DES, this cemented suspicions not only of an upcoming boom in e-commerce, but another major step towards a more digital world. We had already seen, but DES cemented the idea that cryptography was going to grow immensely in commercial importance. How do you exchange keys among millions or billions of users? It was much easier in the military where you had a chain of command to limit the uh, key exchanges. And so we saw a need for it. There was nobody watching out for uh, the public and for commercial entities. With DES in place, the NSA had a whole new challenge. Keep data secure, but not too secure. DES included a 64-bit key, but eight digits were automatically removed, in all reality making it a 56-bit key system. This intentional lapse in security caught the attention of Hellman and fellow cryptographer Whitfield Diffie, and spawned a revolutionary new idea in how cryptographic keys were distributed, which would eventually lead to what we know today as the Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange. By making the key 56 bits, that's 100,000 million million keys roughly, which sounds impossible to search. But Witt and I looked at it and we concluded that you could build a special purpose chip to search a million keys a second, even with 1975 technology. You then would buy a million of these chips, you're searching a million, million keys per second. And then it takes 100,000 seconds to search 100,000 million, million keys. That's about a day. And we ended up with $10,000 per solution. That machine will produce about 1,000 solutions a year. You have to be snoopy enough, you have to be curious enough to have lots of traffic you want to break. NSA has lots of traffic they want to break. Hellman and his team realized that what had originally seemed to be a mistake was actually a design system that could create future unintentional negative consequences towards America's national security, prompting a moral debate amongst cryptographers everywhere. As we started to get ready to go public with this, two high-level NSA employees came out and paid us a visit and said, you're wrong, but please be quiet. If you keep talking this way, you're going to cause grave harm to national security, which of course makes no sense. What they were really saying is you're right, but please be quiet. Uh, you're going to cause grave harm. Our own intellect, wits and mine, and maybe Ralph by that point, told us that it was harmful to America's interests and harmful to the world's interests to have an insecure uh, encryption standard. The United States was the most computerized nation in the world. We had the most to lose. Their decision to go public not only secured the world's data, but it brought Hellman's attention to nuclear deterrence, a topic he describes as needing to be defined before refined. Actually, the definition of nuclear deterrence is insanity. Deterrence doesn't work if you don't act crazy enough. Because if you're totally rational, you would never launch your weapons first because it could be a mistake. And if you've actually been destroyed, what's the point in destroying the rest of the world? You can't solve the nuclear threat in isolation the way most groups try to. They try to get rid of the weapons. You have to build a more peaceful world so the desire for the weapons will be less. Along with all the positive advancements that have occurred within cryptography, the importance of responsible tech advancement is more important now than ever. Cryptography, like all technologies, has the potential for great good uh, or great harm. Uh, and. It will depend on what we as a society uh, do with ourselves. Do we, do we recognize the potential for harm and do we take adequate precaution? Do we worry enough about uh, the unforeseen events, that we, that, the future events that we can't understand because they haven't happened yet? But just how does one go about assessing risk of an event that hasn't happened yet? 
but is bound to eventually occur. So I realized what we had to do is try to quantify the risk. How do you quantify the risk of something that's never happened? It sounds impossible. In the CACM article, I relate this to cryptography because if factoring turned out to be easy, the RSA system would be broken and probably the Diffie-Hellman-Merkel system, which is, uses a closely related mathematical function. And if quantum computers were developed that could have several thousand qubits, then that would also break these systems. And so I think we need to be thinking about the, that possibility. And in the CACM paper, I, I give some rough ideas of what I think we ought to do. Find out more in Martin Hellman's Turing Lecture, Cybersecurity, Nuclear Security, Alan Turing, and Illogical Logic a contributed article in the December 2017's Communications of the ACM.